It's nice to see that the players are beginning to get some of the credit that they deserve. The dole queues on Merseyside stretch further than most. And as these queues get longer this winter, then so the queues to get into the local football grounds are certain to get smaller. Attendances here were down by an average of 2,000 a game last season. They need 42,000 people just to balance the books. And the amazing fact at the start of this new football season is that even Liverpool can no longer pay their way with the money taken through the turnstiles. Of course, the day after Armageddon, you can guarantee a sellout for the Manchester derby. And so, 56,000 came to see United square up to bottom place City. Coppel's in there, so is Duxbury. McElroy, oh, off the legs and Coppel, Coppel! Oh, right across and in the back of the net. And Kevin Reeves came in there. And the defence was stranded as Reeves scored. Way by Booth, Arthur Augustin coming in, oh I say, offside was it, oh it's been given. Power, Caton climbing, his Palmer with a great chance, it's there, Palmer has equalised for City. The City Bold reflect this creditable draw by asking Malcolm Allison to go his year-long return to City ending in the sack, following a string of high-profile, bold and, some may argue, over-ambitious signings. I can't satisfy the egos of some of the people in Manchester. The supporters have been absolutely fantastic, but see, the directors are impatient, and I understand it. I understand them. Still, City are nothing if not a prestigious club, and candidates for the job are not slow coming forward. What was all that about there, eh? Useless, I don't know. Now listen, you've got to really keep it clean in this next half. Got 45 minutes to go, right? So I want you to get out there and really clean up, all right? Things have changed so much. Right. Now, without being disrespectful to anyone... Back up in the rarefied air at the table top, Ipswich face their first true test at Anfield. Bobby Robson stokes their psychic boiler. They'll jump and they'll fight and they'll compete and they'll win the percentages. Away by Johnson, only as far as Tyson! Oh, it's there! And Franz Tyson scores the goal that puts Ipswich ahead against the run of play. So miss. Cohen. Dalgleish. Oh, the linesman's flagged for a foul by Tyson, and the referee has given a penalty. Now, Tyson, the man who scored the goal, has been penalised, and a penalty has been given to Liverpool for the tackle on Dalgleish. Ipswich surround the referee. It looked innocuous to them. The linesman, actually, in my view, made the difference there. He flagged. but it's still gone in. McDermott equalises for Liverpool with his 11th goal of the season for them. And Tyson is still arguing about the original decision. For Ron Greenwood and his England team, it had been a traumatic few months as they sweated on qualification for the 1982 World Cup Finals in Spain. An experienced England team led by Kevin Keegan and featuring a young and thatched Ray Wilkins had gone to the 1980 European Championships as favourites, but had been overshadowed by events as lunatics, thugs, maniacs and madmen grabbed all the summer headlines. I'm sure the players are ashamed. It's a disgraceful exhibition. I'm certainly not proud to be British sitting there here at the moment. It wasn't a good day for Britain. In fact, it was a bad day for Britain. And we really are a splendid country. On the pitch, England bounced back in their World Cup qualifying group with a victory over Norway. Yeah, we have beaten Norway, and it came thanks to goals from Terry McDermott, 
Then Nottingham Forest favourite Tony Woodcock, now playing in Germany for Cologne. And a glorious, mad and brilliant goal from Ipswich striker Paul Mariner. In the days when Midlands clubs peppered the old first division like pips in a pomegranate, things get good and grudgy as Birmingham City visit Villa Park, with Forest old boy Archie Gemmell writing off Villa's championship hopes. Shaw and Hawker get his this is. And he's ready to count! Town, big Ron Atkinson, he was always big, and his West Brom team are also going well. Inspired from midfield by Brian Robson, robust, injury free, and unstoppable. Robson, forward for Regis, back to Moses, and the goalkeeper loses it, and a penalty is given, I think, for handball. Anyway, it gives Gary Owen a chance from the penalty spot. Comes in the 35th minute of the match. And Bailey going the wrong way. 1-0 to West Bromwich Albion. Chance for a break with Regis. Barnes to the right. And somehow he managed to adjust his feet. But he didn't really make up his mind, I don't think. And Barnes has got through this time. And it's in! Makari. And here's Barnes again. And Regis! Lovely cross. West Brom's confidence was sky high, as reflected in their almost Sinatra-like ease in front of camera. You got a beautiful skin. You got a beautiful smile. <laughs> you got style. We genuinely feel that we can be the surprise team, that we can come right through the field. I don't bet, although I think a 50 to 1 is a good chance. Despite West Brom's charge up to fifth position, the Christmas League table shows a three-horse race for the title, with Liverpool, Villa and Ipswich opening a gap at the top. round of the FA Cup and a massive tie at Portman Road where Ipswich clash with fellow title challengers Aston Villa. Again the wind helped a bit then. There's Brazil. There's Mayer! Ball is heard on the balance of play. Dumped out of the cup, Villa manager Ron Saunders has just a week to get his team up for an equally important league match as champions Liverpool roll in to Villa Park again oh he beat money too easily Gary Shaw West and Villa take the lead leaving it to Shaw on through to Mortimer who's onside could this be number two yes Joy, oh joy that was, because I just felt then 2-0 that, you know, we'd, we'd done enough in that game then to actually put them out the race.